The Local Resident Producers Program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to I and Oshkosh. Cheryl Hentz here, and uh, I'm surrounded by good-looking guys tonight, and uh, <laughs> some are even in uniform for us. Um, this uh, to my left is Tom Wissing. Tom's been on the show before. He's the uh, principal over at Oshkosh North in the past, assistant, assistant principal. principal. Well, see, I'm trying to give you a promotion here, Tom. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you were uh, you were at Oshkosh West previously. Now you're at North, um, but you're not here tonight as uh, any kind of an administrator. You're here to talk about hockey. And uh, these two gentlemen here, uh, to my right, is uh, Ethan Franklin. You're a senior from Oshkosh West. West. Yep. Okay, you're both from West. Yep. Okay, all right. And uh, Wyatt Herford, um, you're also a senior from Oshkosh West. And yep. you guys are part of the Oshkosh High School hockey team called the Ice Hawks, correct? Yeah, all right. Correct. Excellent. Well, thank you all for being here. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for having us. We appreciate it very much. And, um, you know, we're, we're not, uh, as, as you know for sure, we're not a sports show, but we do like to promote things that are going on in the community and talk about stuff. And, um, and this is something that, uh, you know, um, Ken Walker, one of our uh, volunteers here in the show, has, has brought to me and said, hey, you know, there's some good things going on here. Right. So. Um, we're we're going to talk to you guys about the various good things going on. This I, I haven't heard much about the hockey team in the area. Now this is a relatively new thing. Uh, well, relatively new to Ashkash. Yeah, it, um, this was the first ever WIA uh, high school hockey team, and, okay. and last year was the inaugural season. So okay, we're going uh, into our second year of uh, play within the WIA. Okay. There have been other. Uh, hockey teams in town through the Y programs and also through the uh, Warbirds or the Ashkosh Youth Hockey Association. Okay, all right. But this is the first time it's WIAA sanctioned. Correct. Okay. Yep. So it's all pretty right. special. Okay. Well, considering that last season was, uh, did you guys both play last year too? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of a season did you have for your inaugural season? Um, we had a decent season. It was about uh, seven fourteen, I think. Okay. So we won a few games, but took a lot of few hard losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you playing teams that had had been in existence longer than the Ice Hawks? Was that maybe an advantage that they had over you guys, or or no? Yeah, I think that was definitely an advantage that they had because they had all played together for longer periods of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the interesting thing here with, with this team is it's not just open to schools within the Oshkosh Area School District. This, um, it, you have to be a, a high school student to play, though. Is Correct. that true? Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. So um, students from Oshkosh West, Oshkosh North, um, Lourdes Academy, and... Um, Valley Christian. Valley Christian. Okay. Yep. So from any four of those high schools, they, they can play. Now, what's the composition of the team? Like, obviously, you guys are both from West. Um, you know, I mean, I, it doesn't need to be precise, but it just some kind of a approximate breakdown of what, how many from different schools. Well, I th approximate breakdown was maybe... 14 from west last year, 7 from north, um, and th 3 or 4 from Lourdes, okay. approximately. How many, are, how many are on a team? 
Well, you, you can. You notice I didn't just add yeah, those yeah, up just now. Can, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, then that's not close to, we had 26 players last year. Okay. Um, you're generally on your bench for a hockey game. You have, you're going to suit up 20 players. Okay. Um, you can have more during the regular season, but it's, you can have not have more than 20 um, once the playoffs start okay. or, or the state tournament. Okay. All right. So how, how is that, guys, playing with, you know, you were talking about these other teams had played with each other for a while longer, and that maybe gave them a little bit of an edge over, over you guys who were in your first season last year. Um, how is it when you're, you know, this year, last year, any year, when you're playing with other guys from different schools? And what is that like? Is, is there a learning curve there, or not, does it not matter so much? Um, I think you feel kind of more involved, which is nice. Uh, the schools behind you hopefully get a, m a little bit more recognition, mm -hmm. so that's nice. Um, yeah, a lot of t other teams have more experience than us, but I think we did pretty well last year for being a first-year team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, and, and the fact that you don't really know the kids from these other schools and, uh, you know, you, you see them at practices and so forth, but is, th is it a little bit more difficult playing with someone that you don't know as well as like you guys when you're going to the same school day in and day out? Is um, that a challenge? Well, I think it would be, but um, all the people on our team uh, played for Warbirds previously, so okay. we, we really know all the guys that are on our team right now. Okay. All right. Um, well, let's talk about how this kind of got started, Tom, because, um, you know, I this is only its second season, um, and obviously now it is a sanctioned, uh, you know, a sanctioned sport within the league or whatever. Um, so how did, it, um, how did it go from being something through the rec department to being a sanctioned activity? Uh, well, I think it, it started probably when, when the 20th Ave Lampsia Ice Arena was built in 2002. That's so that's the first start really started with the youth programs out there, which again are the, the Y programs and the, the Warbirds. Um, it started before I, I got involved. So in 2005, there was a small group that, that started looking at uh, youth hockey and then um, promoting and uh, a, a WIA team. Um, I got involved two years ago in 2007 and joined that group. and, and uh, there was a couple different changes. There was a big movement by high school teams to go into the WIA. So, so there was a, uh, the Wisconsin Amateur Hockey Association was shrinking at the high school level, and the WIA was growing. Mm -hmm. So it uh, it became the league to um, join for, as a to compete at the high school level. And it is it's the premier prep league in the state too. So um, it's a step up uh, for these guys. And there's there's some benefits with it, like being recognized by the school and earning awards and um, being more part of the school community and everything that goes around uh, athletic events and that. So. Okay. So at games, then, um, you know, when when we see basketball games, when we see football games, we see cheerleaders, we see bands. Um, does that kind of um, uh, do those types of groups also support your activities at your games? Are there bands there? Are there cheerleaders there? You guys hope so, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last year we had uh, the Ashcash West and I think Ashcash North Band come and play at some of our games, and that was really nice because uh, all the rest of the years we just had a CD playing on the mm. loudspeakers, and it really just adds to the atmosphere having your own band. Well, it, it's got to, you know, kind of get you jazzed up more, too, when there's something live going on rather right. than a CD yeah. playing on a speaker system. And Lourdes Band. Actually, all three bands. We don't. We currently don't have players at, at Valley Christian, but okay. all three bands came and played, and um, we're hoping they all, all play again this year and maybe more than once, too. Sure. It would be great. So, And it really does. It adds to the, to the uh, atmosphere of the game and makes it more exciting and sure. enjoyable. And well, you know... Um, Given that this is a relatively new um, sanctioned sport in the area, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what do you attribute this uh, increased interest to? Well, I think the, the um, you know, the, really the youth programs are where, it's, where it started and that's mm -hmm. going to feed into the high school program. So you had these, a lot of these guys playing um, in high school now were, were some of the first players to join the youth programs at the Y and, and within the, the Oshkosh Youth Hockey Association. So 
as they have come up and now there's younger players involved, the, the interest in hockey has grown in the, the city of Oshkosh. So. Okay, all right. Now, given that it's not just something through the Oshkosh Area School District, uh, did this have to go to each of the, um, you know, the various, like our school board here uh, for the city, public schools, and, um, you know, I don't know if the private schools have like a school board per se, but they must have some kind of governing body that mm -hmm. things get approved through. Right. Did it have to go to each of those bodies? Uh, correct, yes. And what we are is a co-op, which is, is common for hockey teams mm -hmm. across the state. So you apply for a co-op with the WIA and uh, uh, you have a sponsoring district or schools, so the Oshkosh Area School District is, this, is the, uh, the home district or the sponsoring district and then it gets approved by whatever other schools would like to be part of the co-op and we are uh, there's a possibility the co-op could expand to it to include um, surrounding schools too okay. and those are they it's an agreement for two years okay. so after this year we would have to renew our co-op okay from a from a coaching standpoint and I I know that you're not currently a coach but you've kind of done a little bit of that in the past um, and since we don't have uh, the, the coach actually here I'll ask you Tom uh, from a from a coaching standpoint um, it, it, does it present any unique challenges because um, all the players are coming from different schools or does that not matter so much well I think any high school coach would, uh, loves being in the building with their athletes mm -hmm. so I think there's some challenges there because you're not having the the uh, the daily contact, um, you know, being able to, to interact with these guys, whether it's, you know, about what they're doing in the classroom or, or grades or, you know, uh, diet or working out or, or whatever. Um, you know, but those things, you know, there's a lot of coaches that aren't working in the, the school buildings either, so they can be overcome and they spend a lot of time together uh, at practice and on weekends and on the bus and going to games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. There's some obstacles, but the coach can overcome those. Okay, all right, good. Um, it, now I know that you're not you're not receiving funding from any of the schools, correct? Correct. Or the school districts. So, how much does it cost to run a program like this? Uh, uh, you're looking at uh, about thirty thousand to forty thousand dollars a year. Really? Um, now, does that include uniforms, or do they pay their own? Well, last year was or initial year was probably a little more than that. Uh, okay. between 40 to 50 to start out buying uniforms and, and uh, everything else you need but then when you know now our second year we will have a little bit of a, a savings but once you're paying for ice time and transportation and and salaries and referees mm -hmm. and all of those things it's it's gonna cost about thirty to forty thousand dollars a year okay. so how do you where do you raise your funds how do you well we have we re we raise our money th three different ways. One is players fees. Mm -hmm. So th so these guys that play do, do pay a, a fee. Um, it's been the same for the last two years, $850 a year to play. Um, $850? $850. Wow, that's uh, steep. Um, you guys want to play really badly and your parents <laughs> really must <laughs> love your involvement well, in this. And it sounds, it sounds like a lot of money, but believe it or not, um, Youth programs uh, generally probably cost more than that at the high school level. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we also do fundraising uh, events and then also we uh, donations. Okay. So. And and one thing that you've got coming up to help raise funds is you've you've got a raffle coming up and um, uh, there's there's some pretty nice prizes uh, that are are coming up here for this. Why don't we run through these a little bit? You bet. Uh, we, we are having our slap shot raffle, and this is the first year we're running it. Um, we're selling, uh, we limit the number of tickets we're going to sell, and, and tickets are $25. You can buy as many as you want and enter the raffle as many times as you want. And uh, we limit it to 2,100 tickets, so you have a 1 in 2,100 chance of getting the big prize, which is better than the state lottery. Um, in our grand prizes, you have your choice of a 2010 Nissan Rogue, uh, a boat, and or uh, $12,000 cash. So they're very nice. And um, we also have additional prizes. First prize would be a Las Vegas trip for two, with, which is a two-night stay, and that was donated by Ambassador Travel. 
Second prize was a LG 42 inch HD LCD TV donated by Castles TV and Appliance. Third prize, we have a $250 cash prize, and we also have five um, $100 early bird drawings on uh, various dates throughout the season at, at games. And I should quick mention, you know, we, we would like to thank uh, Bergstrom um, for their involvement in providing the Nissan Rogue and also Hergert's with uh, Hergert Sports Center for providing the bowl. Okay, and we see the uh, the dates up there now as far as when those drawings are going to be held. Uh, it looks like uh, November 14th, November 21st, December 4th, December 11th, and December 19th. Correct. And, um, you know, some of the places that you were just mentioning uh, who, um, you know, um, were uh, generous enough to, to donate the prizes, um, there are also um, outlets where people can buy tickets. Yes, that's okay. true. You can stop in any of those places or uh, see any... Uh, Ice Hawks player, so Bergstrom on Washburn, Herget Sports Center on Sawyer, Castles on Oregon Street, the 20th Ave YMCA, or uh, your local Ice Hawks hockey player uh, will all be selling tickets. And the final drawing is not um, until April, I gotta check the date here, April 17th, 7 p.m. at our Old Men with Sticks hockey game, which is also another yeah. fundraiser we What's do. Old Men with Sticks? Um, well, that <laughs> or do I want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty much what it sounds like. <laughs> a bunch How of, old are they? Uh, well, we, we've had uh, players in our, I think our oldest player might have been in 80, around 80 years old. And they play against each other. Yeah, Certainly they don't play very, against yeah. you guys. Very, <laughs> no, very, very friendly game. Yeah. It's a charity game. Um, I bet that would be so cool to see. And it's, it's a lot of Oshkosh and local uh, old-time hockey players yeah. come out to play, and uh, it, we, it coincides with a men's tournament that, okay. is, that we run uh, in conjunction with the YMCA, and the money goes back to the Y Youth Hockey Program to provide equipment for players, and then also to the, the high school hockey program. Okay. Now, you mentioned the, the YMCA on, on 20th Street, Tom, and um, of course that's our newest YMCA in town now. Is, is, is that where the rink is that you play at when you have a home game? Or yes, yes. Okay. The ice arena is located there. Uh, um, beautiful facility. Um, encourage you to go out and, and come out to a game and not only see the facility, but see these guys uh, gliding up and down the ice and hopefully putting the, the puck in the net. Um, the YMCA has just been a tremendous partner <coughs> through all of this in, in building hockey in Oshkosh and uh, uh, also providing this opportunity for these student athletes at the high school level. Sure. We actually have a clip of uh, someone making a goal. Um, we can go ahead and, and run that now, but uh, our either neither one of you are making the goal, right, because you don't play those <laughs> positions or... I play defense, but okay. uh, he, he might be doing yeah. that this year a little bit, hopefully. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but hopefully. not in this clip. No, not okay. in this clip. You didn't score this one? <laughs> I don't think okay. so. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and run that and uh, you know, see one of your fellow teammates making a goal anyway. We'll have to see who it is. Yeah, <laughs> you can maybe tell us. Now, was that at the um, at the 20th Street Arena then? Uh, I suppose it's kind of hard to tell too, huh? Tony. Yeah, you might have been Tony. Yeah, that's at the Oshkosh YMCA. That okay. was a. That was a 1-0 game, which doesn't happen a lot. Wow. So that was a hard-fought <laughs> game, and we won that. And that Who was our that? own T.O., Tony Olson, that <laughs> scored the winning goal. <laughs> Who or, uh, no, Carson. Who were you playing against? No, Can no. you tell? That's Kenosha. Okay. Yeah. And that was from last season, not from this season, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. So it looks like it was either Carson Bucksness or Tony Olson. Well, while we're finishing looking at that, um, you know, for, for you two guys, what is it about um, hockey as opposed to some other sport that you find, you know, so exhilarating and, and uh, is kind of your pick of sports? Um, I think for me it's uh, conditioning. Uh, really, just going as hard as you can really helps out in this game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, practice, you know, makes perfect, so... 
Well, plus you got to be good on skates to do this. I mean, you know, for people who have weak ankles, you wouldn't be able <laughs> you wouldn't be able <laughs> to play this sport at all. Um, and and that it's a tough thing to do, even with strong ankles. You really have to you have to have um, you know some agility there to be able to to skate around and and not just skate, but fast and with some precision like moves too. Yeah, what is it about uh, the sport that you like so much? Um, I really just enjoy the nonstop action of all the games. Uh, you can, you know, switch during during the game without a whistle. I mean, it's just nonstop. You got to think on your feet. I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, were you both involved in hockey before you got into this with the Ice Hawks? Were you in any other kind of? Uh, you know, league or team? Uh, yeah, we actually both played for the Warbirds. Okay. Uh, since we were about 12 years old. So. Okay. So to play hockey, you don't have to be a senior just to be in the Ice Hawks. You have to, or, or you don't have to be in high school, but to play in the Ice Hawks, you have to. Mm -hmm. But there right. are right. hockey programs youth, available youth for programs. younger kids. Okay. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what, I mean, we've addressed the funding. Um, and, you know, I think it's so important that people understand that this is, um, you know, a very expensive sport, not necessarily more expensive than other sports that are being played, but um, there's absolutely no funding coming from the school districts for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why the raffle uh, that we showed the information on before is so important. Um, and your folks are kicking in a lot of money here, too. The, the 850 that your parents pay per year, now that buys your uniforms, what other equipment does that pay for? Um, basically it pays for our ice time. Uh, okay. Most of the players already have all their equipment that they need. Okay. And you have to buy that, or your parents have to buy that, I okay. guess. Okay, all right. All right. So your, your skates and whatever else, uh, you know, that you've already got. Yeah. You don't replace that every year. You can. Um, sometimes you know you want to update with the newest thing, but it gets pretty expensive also. Mm -hmm. So the 850 and then buying all the gear is quite a fee. Okay. You both have really nice teeth. Now, <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the things, when we think about hockey, we, we, th we hear, you know, we see movies, we hear jokes, we, we hear horror stories about a player taking a puck to the mouth. You guys have really pretty teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure your folks want to keep them that way. Um, how often, really, does someone get a puck in the mouth? I mean, certainly it's possible, but it probably doesn't happen all that often, or am I wrong on that? Well, with, I mean, the, with the equipment that they're wearing, um, you know, in the, in math, you have to wear masks. They're mandatory at the high school level. So um, injuries are infrequent. Okay. I mean, you, you know, probably less than other contact sports that you see okay. players. So not just a not just a, you know a mask, but are you wearing like mouth guards as well, or is that part of the mask? Mo or? Yeah, they they're wearing mouth guards, elbow pads, shoulder pads, breezers or pants that are padded, okay. um, shin guards, socks. The whole the whole. Shebang, sure. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, th but that's good. So, I mean, but still, you can get hurt. Have either one of you ever been hurt? Yeah. Uh, last year, I actually uh, tore my hamstring, okay. and that uh, that set me back quite a bit. Yeah. So. Well, it's got to be frustrating, you know. Now, yeah. did that happen at the beginning of the season or in the middle or toward the end? Um, kind of happened in the middle of the season. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so how the many how time. many games did you miss? Probably about um, three or four. Mm. Wow. Uh, what about you, Wyatt? Have you ever been hurt? Um, well, I missed a little bit of the season in the beginning from a previous injury to my wrist. Um, so I had to sit out for a while with that, but I haven't really had too much with hockey mm -hmm. um, being injured. Okay. A lot of padding there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're probably not out skateboarding on the weekends and things like that, right? You're protecting yeah. your body yeah. for your sport. Okay. Snowboarding. Snow <laughs> yeah. oh, well, but you know, snowboarding. I mean, you know, there's snow there. Come on, that's that's some cushion. Um, what what is the um, the capacity at the 20th Avenue uh, rink? Around six to eight hundred. Okay. Spectators, okay. and we've had uh, some very good crowds at, at a few of our games, and we we'd love to get more fans in there. It's great when you when we're playing at home and we, you're packing the stands, and the kids are yeah. excited, and the band's playing, and there's a lot of noise and cheering, and it gets these guys fired up, and it 
just adds to the whole atmosphere. Sure. What What is a ticket for a game go for? Uh, WIA uh, rates, same as other basketball games or football games, $4 for adults, $2 for children. Okay, so certainly affordable and reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and is it is it set up very much similar, uh, Tom, to any other sport where you've got uh, concessions and so forth? Yeah, there, there's a concession stand at the at the YMCA uh, in the lobby area when you go in and and um, yeah, it's it's very much uh, the same kind of atmosphere and setup as other uh, sporting events. Okay, um, I have not um, been to any hockey games here, but I know when I lived in Colorado, I was at some uh, some hockey games, and you know anyone who's ever been to a hockey game knows that there's the old Zamboni that comes yeah. out. Um, <laughs> Everybody loves his Zamboni. Yes, well, of we got to get you to a hockey game. Do you well, want to drop a puck for us? <laughs> drop a puck. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's to start the game. I, I know that. I know that. I just don't know that I want to go and do that. <laughs> I, I'm not good walking on oh. ice. <laughs> Um, and not that you'd put me on skates, but I'm just saying I don't know that I want to be <laughs> walking on ice. But um, um, I'll think about that. Okay. I'll, I'll think yeah. about that. Let but um, now someone told me that um, you can actually have a ride on the Zamboni. Is that, that true? That is true. Every, really? Every game we run a 50-50 raffle, and whoever wins it, they have their choice. They can uh, ride the Zamboni or they can take the cash. Okay, all right. So it's not something where, okay, some kids come with their folks and, oh, mommy, daddy, look at that, and I want to ride, and it's not that kind of thing. No, uh, it's not. You, it's you not. gotta, you gotta, you know, actually compete, if you will, for it. Yeah. Okay. You gotta buy a raffle ticket. All right, okay. And, and are those sold at the, yep. at the game yes. also? Yes. Okay. We sell them at every game. And all right. And there's a drawing every game, no winners. So. Okay. Now, um, some of your games last year were, were broadcast here on, um, oh, I, I'm still wanting to say OCAT, but it's OCMS. Right. Um, they were broadcast here on, on City Cable 2, um, or City Channel 2. I'm not sure what it's called anymore, <laughs> but they were broadcast here, and they were tape delayed like so many of our other programs mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um, are they going to be aired again this year? Yeah, they okay. are. are, are okay. uh, uh, Ken Walker, who you're familiar with, is going to be yep, our I video know. man for hockey, and okay. and you'll be able to pick up uh, Ice Hawks games tape delayed uh, uh, right here on City Cable Two. All right, the games are never live, though, right? Uh, no, they are not. Okay. We we had three games last year that were on the radio live, okay, uh, but never on uh, local television. Is there a reason that they're not on local TV live? It is. I, I know that Gannett, I think it was, got into some trouble last year for doing some kind of live video streaming of, of not hockey games, but some kind of game. But that doesn't have anything to do with why these aren't live. It's probably just a matter of personnel or whatever. Yeah, personnel or okay. cost. Uh, mm -hmm. That was, I believe that was with the WIA in the postseason. And okay. I mean, that would be up to Gannett if they wanted to live stream our games or not. They could do that. And we, I mean, we would love it if they did mm -hmm. it. But mm -hmm. It's not a... You know, I think for us the limitation is going to be hiring a camera crew and sure, making that happen sure. and stuff. So, yeah. um, okay, now we um, we've got a uh, schedule of your games. Uh, we've uh, also got your website that I hope has been put up throughout uh, throughout this segment. Um, but in case it has not been, it still could be. Uh, but the website address is www.oshkoshicehawks.org. And um, as we go to break, um, we're going to be rolling a schedule of your games. So at this point, I will just say thank you all very much for yeah, being thank here. You. Have a yes. great season. Uh, continued good luck and, and keep your teeth and in, in your body <laughs> in good shape, all right? So we're going to take a break. And as we go to break, uh, we'll be rolling their uh, schedule for this season. We'll be right back. Are we done? Is it? Dear Mom and Dad, well, I finally have some time off, so I'm writing to tell you that I'm doing well. We have good days and bad days over here. We try to remember the good ones and get through the bad ones. 
Mostly we have each other, and that's what keeps us going. And mom, since you asked, if anyone wants to help, just tell them to contact the USO. You can't believe how much they do for us. With love, your son, Michael. Every year, the U.S. Department of the Treasury receives about 1.4 million reports of problems with paper checks. Checks can be lost, stolen, or delayed. If you still receive Social Security payments by paper check, Treasury wants you to know about a safer, more convenient way to get your money. The Direct Express Prepaid Debit MasterCard. The Direct Express card is new and is available to anyone receiving Social Security benefits, even if you don't have a bank account. Your monthly benefits will be automatically placed onto your card account each month on the day your money is due. While other debit cards cost money, it is possible to use the Direct Express card for free to make purchases, pay bills, and get cash at thousands of locations nationwide. There are no sign-up or monthly account fees. No more waiting for the mail or worrying about lost or stolen checks. Call 1-877-212-9991 or visit www.usdirectexpress.com. We were in an emergency situation. We don't have extra. We have a little bit of water and a little bit of food. A meeting no. place, no. No. I don't think we have a first aid kit. We have tuna fish, we have right. beans, we so. have um, um, canned beans. tomatoes, true. you know. That's true, but uh, that's really not survival food. Tomato we, paste. Yeah, well, oh. yeah. Right? You don't have rent? No, it's no. too early. And you don't have a sack of gifts? No, it's and in the cleaners. I, don't, I haven't made my gifts yet. All right, okay. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's good to see yeah, you, Dan. Yeah, yeah. I've missed you. Yeah, uh, Dan, um, you know, most of you I think know, Dan uh, has been my co-host for, um, gosh, I don't know. All, in, in December or January, it would be three years. Was it that long? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you did a lot of traveling over yeah, the summer. I did. And um, so took some time off, yep. and then you'd kind of been away from things, you know, going yeah. on locally, and yeah. and you just kind of begged off, you yep. know. Yep. Um, yep. Regrettably, it, yep. it was Thank a sad you. decision it was, it was a for both of us. Great experience for me, and, and I'm glad I'm back tonight. Yeah. So, so um, anyway, um, you're going to be taking some time off from the show on a yep. more permanent basis, I yep. think, yep. Um, doing some things personally. Yep. But um, I'm going to try and get you back near election time. Sure. Um, but um, you have, one of the travels that you've done this past summer um, mm -hmm. has been to Sweden. To Sweden. And uh, you were here a few months back talking about one of your trips and, and uh, wanted to hear about uh, your trip to Sweden too. Now this is not your first trip to Sweden. No, it's probably my fifth or sixth. Yeah, but you've got a daughter who's family. I have a married daughter. Family. Uh, I have two little grandsons, five and two, and a nice son-in-law and a very large extended Swedish family. So every time I go back, I learn a little bit more about Sweden. Yeah, okay. yeah. so you're pretty comfortable with, uh, with the whole Swedish culture? And well, I grew up in uh, Norwegian, North Dakota. Okay. And, you know, not to generalize too much, but this is part of Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. This is Iceland, this is Denmark, this is Norway, this is Sweden, this is Finland. Now everyone can understand each other, except no one can understand the Finns. <laughs> <laughs> their language, their language is, is just beyond. <laughs> so a Norwegian can understand a Swede and vice versa. Okay. Danish is a little different, but no one, no one can understand it. Yeah. Well, um, you know, describe <laughs> Sweden for us. I mean, tell well, us. Sure. A couple of things. It's a thousand miles long from north to south, mm. but it only has nine million people. Okay. And most of the people live in the south. The upper parts of Norway and Sweden and Finland are kind of reindeer in the Laplands. It's really they can go. There's no borders, really. How wide is it? Uh, it's only know? a couple hundred miles wide. Really? Yes. Okay. Long and so slender. So we're talking very, very thin. Yeah, some spots maybe three, four hundred, but it's, 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 a, it's, they're all slices. Wow. Okay. So um, it's, uh, it's a town, it's a country of immigrants. Uh, Sweden has one of the more liberal policies. They take in about 25,000 Iraqis every year right now. Really? Yeah. When hmm. Yugoslavia dissolved uh, 20, 30 years ago, they took in a lot of people from different sections of Yugoslavia. So of the 9 million population, about 1.5 million are immigrants, either first generation or second generation. Okay. All right. So they're, uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're a neutral country. Uh, they believe in humanitarianism, but there are a lot of tensions right now 
with the Muslim population and the Swedish population. They're, because they're, of, of the same types of um, problems uh, and tensions that we see elsewhere? Yeah, they the get or? free education, free medical, free unemployment, but they don't work and they don't go to school. Hmm. Uh, and so it may take a while. Um, they have not closed their borders yet as much as Denmark has mm -hmm. and Norway has. Uh, still pretty open, pretty free, but a lot of tensions because mm -hmm. of non-assimilation between yeah. the two. Yeah. It's a Lutheran country, as is all of Scandinavia. It's the, it's the heart of, of Lutheranism. Uh, they all have state churches, and they're all Lutheran. Okay. Uh, and so it's uh, not a lot of people go to church anymore, but they, but they still have the state churches. Huh. Um, they're quiet people, uh, and I'm used to that from North Dakota. Norwegians don't talk to you very much unless you really have to push it. Yeah. So you walk down a street in Sweden and you try to make eye contact with people, yeah, you might get one out of ten that will acknowledge you. And it's not that they're, they're, they're just private. They don't, they don't brag. They don't talk a lot. Uh, and, and like Sebastian, my son-in-law, says, unless you know someone in Sweden for ten years, they're not your friend. Hmm. Uh, so it's, it's English friendly. Uh, the Swedes have requirement that starting in kindergarten, every student goes and learns English. Mm -hmm. Twenty years ago it was German. Uh, they switched about twenty years ago to English. So it's, it, you meet any person under 30 or 40, they speak very good English. Some of the older people don't. Yeah. So it's now, do they have, uh, like, a, another language that they teach more than some other language in the school system? Or is it just English? You know, because yeah. around here... Yeah, you, you, can know, take, you, you can take other... Is that what you meant, other languages? Yeah. Yeah, I oh, mean, you can take you know, others. Like in this country, most... If you're going to know a second language in this right. country, so many people, uh, a lot of them know, like, Spanish. Sure. You know, um, so what is it like there? Well, everyone has to take English. English, yes. And then you, they have they have Spanish, and then some okay. other. There are a lot of Spanish people that okay. come there. Swedish men seem to go travel all over the world, and they always bring back women from other countries, just like Sebastian brought my daughter from the <laughs> United States. So there, I mean, it's, and and yeah. she met a lot of these people because, uh, in order to get a visa, uh, you have to take four classes in Swedish. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take a test, but you have to go through some of that. And, and so she met a lot of people from other countries, Latin American countries, B Peru and Chile in particular, yeah. whose husbands, uh, you know, were Swedes, and they came to Sweden, and they were in these Swedish classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of that. This is a highly socialistic country. Mm -hmm. um, the tax, high tax rate is about 60% on high incomes. Okay? okay. 60%. Wow. Sales tax is 20% on everything. Huh. And we complain here. Yeah. <laughs> but in exchange for that, this is a single-payer health care system. Okay. All right. Um, education is free. Uh, daycare is almost free. Uh, parents get a supplement of about $150 per month for each child until they reach the age 18 because the government believes that there should be money for children for food and clothing in case the parents don't have it. So and that goes across any ec ec or in income level, doesn't matter. So you get, if you have two children, you get 300 a month. Yeah. Um, they don't have babies, so they've initiated a let's have more baby program. So if you're a, a, a mother in, in Sweden and you have a baby, you get 16 months off at 80% of your base salary. Or your husband wow. can divide the time with you. You can share your 16 months. The, the husband can stay home for eight months or 10 months and the wife for the other. And that's paid for by the state. <laughs> it's worked not so well that now they've offered in a second initiative. If you have a second baby, within two years, you get the same thing again. 16 <laughs> months at 80% at base salary. Okay, so why are they doing this? They're having children. Yeah. And, and this is a highly socialized system. That's why they're upset about mm -hmm. uh, the immigrants who have come from the Muslim-speaking countries. They want them to work so they can tax them. Sure. Because the social system needs high income to mm -hmm. run this system. Okay. And so when their birth rate falls to, you know, one percent, uh, gotcha. the, the 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 state planners say we have to deal with this. Yeah. Uh, this is a country with extremely low infant mortality. I think it's first or second in the world. This is a country where the life expectancy is a first or second or third in the world. Of course, there's only nine million, but nevertheless, they're extremely health conscious, mm -hmm. uh, exercise conscious. Uh, my son-in-law is 33 and he's never driven a car. Wow. He so bikes, he walks, he or walks, he bikes? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, and they're very exercise orientated. 
both in the wintertime and in the summertime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, everybody has a bike. Mm. Seventy-five-year-old women biking to the market. You know. But it helps if you have, uh, you know, bike and biker-friendly um, roads. And oh, and incredible! Like that, the biker know. rules Sweden. You, if you got to stop, every car's got to stop. It Amazing. takes you maybe twenty minutes to get through a town of thirty, forty thousand because you got to go with, wait for all the bikes. <laughs> Um, so, so do they have a lot of cars there, though, or not so much? A two-car family would be almost unheard of. Oh, really? Yeah, I, you know. Okay. Uh, at some point, uh, you know, if you live out in the suburbs, uh, you have to have a car. You live in the rural area, you do. But there are a lot of people that just live in apartments in town mm -hmm. that go with bikes or buses. Trains, train system is very good. Okay. You can go anywhere with a train as All well. All right, yeah. okay. So. Can we talk about the, the health system for a little bit, Dan? Sure. Um, not that you're an expert on it. No, I'm not means, by all means. But, means. Um, you know, because that's at the forefront of our news sure. here. Sure, sure. Um, and we're all hearing the, you know, the horror stories about how, uh, not socialized medicine per se, but how a government-run mm -hmm. health system is going mm -hmm. to just cripple us, and mm -hmm. you know, old people are going to be sent to the death chamber, right. and and all all these things that we're hearing from, uh, you know, the the <laughs> tea groups that are showing, yes. <laughs> the little tea parties, if you will. Um, you know, how is it working? And I understand every country is different right. because there's different uh, little anomalies with each one, right. you know, but. Um, well, I've been, How does it work there? I, I can tell you on family medicine, because I've been around for the births of both of those babies, my grandsons. Mm -hmm. uh, Mecca is assigned a midwife uh, halfway through her pregnancy, and that same midwife delivers the baby and then follows that baby for one year after birth, mm -hmm. including monthly checkups in her home. Uh, that part of it is extremely good. Now, they're very hard on cesareans, and... Uh, almost cruel, <laughs> they don't want to do them. Natural is a big word in Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. Just things ought to be natural. Don't, mm -hmm. Hard to get prescriptions for uh, antibiotics, although their pharmacies offer far more than ours do. You don't have to go to a doctor, but they're very strong in that. You should breastfeed your child for at least a year. It's almost knocked into your head. Mm -hmm. You're not Swedish if you don't breastfeed for a year. Okay. So those are very important. Now, one of, one of Sebastian's sisters uh, had a serious elbow injury. Uh, she had extra insurance, and, and some Swedes do. Uh, that worked for, well for her. My guess is if she would have gone only through the government system, she would have had to have waited for some length of time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long. But uh, for basic health care, uh, the elderly are treated extremely well. Um, the state about 50 years ago was upset that everyone was moving into the city. So in every city in Sweden, you have these little summer cottages where elder citizens, senior citizens, leave their apartments and go out to these summer cottages. They're right in the middle of town. Each one has a garden because the government believed that uh, near being near the soil and, and having your own garden made for a healthy life. Okay. And you might run into one in the town where Mecca lives in called Lund, Lund. Uh, uh, in the middle of town, there's like 300 of them. Hmm. And, uh, they're neat, painted different colors, and you see older people out hoeing. They have their bike beside their house. Uh, so, I, you know, from that standpoint, uh, but, you know, if you get into more acute things, I, I, I have no experience. I yeah. can't, I can't yeah. tell you about that. But from what I know for family health care, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's very quick. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of doctors from a lot of different countries because they have immigrants from different countries. Some of these people are doctors. So it's... It's a wide range of, of, uh, of doctors. Okay. Another interesting thing is she, you keep your own medical record. Uh, so you go into a doctor and you bring in your file and they, all right, your temperature, your weight, whatever, they put it down, whatever else. And at the end of the appointment, they give you back your, car, your, your medical records and you keep them. That's your responsibility. When Mecca went to deliver a second baby, they forgot the second baby's record at the house and they said, we can't deal with you, you have your records. Wow. So she had to take cab and go back, and, and her, her husband did, and, and came back with the record. Now, they keep a set, but the official set is yours, okay. and you're responsible for that. Seems to me that cuts down on paperwork. Sure. Yeah. Well, now, you know, and this is just, you know, small potatoes, really, in, in the grand scheme sure. of things. But 
if you're keeping track of your original copy of all your medical records and you were to have something catastrophic happen, a fire, a, you know, whatever they have over there, if they have earthquakes or tornadoes, whatever they may have uh, in the way of uh, natural disasters, um, and, and something like that gets ruined mm -hmm. or turns up missing, you can then, of course, go to the hospital or your doctor to get a copy or... Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't be as in well organized, or it might be as well organized. Because different places would yeah. have different pieces yeah. of the puzzle, if yeah. you will. The other things are the Swedes are so record conscious. Yeah. I, they may have second sets. Now, I don't know whether okay. they do or not. But uh, hmm. uh, yeah, I think you could recover it at the hospital okay. or the doctor's office. Okay. And yeah. then have to, if you get part from the doctor and part from the hospital, yeah. you'll kind of have to piecemeal yeah. it together. Yeah. So. Yeah. They don't well. let you in, in very long. I mean, you. You deliver the baby one day and you're gone the next, yeah. but that's pretty mo almost yeah. here too, unless yeah. there's extenuating circumstances. Yeah. What's what's the crime like there? Um, well, let's talk about drunken driving. Okay, Kay. let's because that's something um, being talked about a lot here. They don't. My friends in Sweden don't dare drink and drive, even one drink. So if you're at a party of Sebastian's brothers and sisters, there'll always be one person for each car that says, I'm not driving tonight. I mean, I'm not drinking tonight. They'll drink in their house if they don't have to drive. If you get picked up the first time, and it varies whether you had other things going on, but you probably could lose your license for a year on first offense. And there are no you know, sanctions on like employment or something. It doesn't matter. If you get it two or three times, you, you may never drive again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, people are truly, and you hear this everywhere, you know, I'm, I cannot drink. I am driving here tonight. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're a country that has bikes and they walk yeah. and they have a lot. Yeah. But but that's one area where it's incredibly, uh, you know, you do not do that. But even here, uh, you know, people are, you know, well, we're taking your license away. We're suspending it. We're right. revoking it. People drive anyway. Right. What is the deterrent there, uh, if you know, to keep people from, um, say, their license has been taken away for a year? Um, what's what's the deterrent to stop them from still driving? I mean, are they well, that's a good tough question. with their I guess are they tough with their prison systems or yeah. well, you lose your car for one thing after one or two. Offenses. They take your car they away. Take, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be fairly good deterrent. That would be a good deterrent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, speeding is another one. They have all these electronic things in every small town. And the ones where they get you on the most is the, if you don't slow down to 30 kilometers an hour when you're, that's the basic speed, like 20, 30 in, in our town. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're taking pictures of your license. Okay. And uh, you will <laughs> you'll get a letter with a fine. Uh, same with the highway. You, go, you can see them, they're different categories and, and they'll say, I'm, we rented a car for a week and drove all over. And I got used to that because I, I, I have a lead foot. And uh, you know, I'd get a nudge you're saying, hey, you see that coming up? Slow down. <laughs> so you go from 70 to 50 to 30 kilometers and you speed up again. But uh, it's, uh, they'll get you. Well, that's a way to raise money. Yeah. And, and not only that, but it keeps officers safe because True. it keeps them off the streets. True. So someone's not going to hit them or, right. you know, shoot them or whatever. And it frees them up to be doing other things. Exactly. Plus it increases your revenue that right. you're able to, to generate. Right. Um, you know, it, and we hear more and more about that coming here, right. not not in Oshkosh right. per se, but right. you know, I, I, as someone who drives down to Chicago quite a bit, you know, especially in the construction zones, right. they have it marked, right. you know, that right. you're entering a, a right. video surveillance right. speeding area. Cameras. But I don't know if they should be telling people. Yeah. You know, I've got yeah. mixed feelings on yeah. that. Cameras on Ninth Avenue and Witzel and some of those speed streets in town would probably pay big dividends. <laughs> well, yeah, and um, you know, but then there's all kinds of other things that go along with that, you know, sure. how do you know that it's you <laughs> driving and, or how do they know that it's you driving and not that you've loaned your car out to someone? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess there's ways to figure this there out. There are, but, but, if, but if you, if someone borrowed your car and you get uh, a letter with five speeding tickets, you're certainly going to find the guy that had your car and you're <laughs> going to say, those are your tickets, boy, that's, not mine. That's right. Yeah. But, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think in many respects, it's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not sure if it's a good thing to be, you know, notifying people that mm -hmm. that those cameras are coming up or if they just shouldn't be all over. I've, my jury is out on that mm -hmm. one. So so what uh, now you've typically, as long as I've known you, mm -hmm. I, I don't recall you ever going to Sweden in any time other than summer. Is that typically when you go there? No, I've been there in December, okay. the first two years before I was on the show. Okay. Uh, I was there in April, uh, 
three years ago when Jeremy, the youngest, was born. Okay. So it varies. It's cheaper to go in the wintertime, okay. air, airfare-wise. All right. Um, but I, in the summer, I went. And they took okay. off their vacations. So, you know, we were all together for that three-week period. How are their seasons, uh, how do their seasons compare to ours? Like right now, we're entering fall. What okay. is it like there now? Um, the joke in Sweden is that summer is the longest day of the year. <laughs> uh, winter is gray and white, and you wait for that one day in the summer. Okay. Um, it's different, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's depressing for people who are used to more sun. It's already getting dark early. Mm -hmm. uh, it can rain any time, any place, anywhere. Uh, you can have some summers when you don't have summers. Maybe the high would be 60. On the other hand, the winters are usually not below zero. Uh, okay. Some snow, more as you go further north, a lot of rain everywhere else. Yeah. But it's so depressing because your days get shorter yeah. every month. You know, the sun has gone by two in the afternoon. You don't, wow. see, you don't see the sun until eight or nine. And then, well, of course, when you get to June, then the sun is there 22 hours yeah. or 23 hours. Hmm. Uh, a real vitamin D deficiency with, with sun. Uh, all young children are supposed to take vitamin D tablets until they're 18. Uh, it's hard on people, I think. It's depressing. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's maybe a theme of Scandinavia is maybe part of the quietness of, of, of their culture is that they're, you know, <laughs> they've been through really long winters. Yeah. Well, imagine what it would be like to live in um, Alaska yeah. where you got six yeah. months of, of daylight and yeah. six months yeah. of, and, of and night. And Sweden is about the same. Yeah. As Alaska, if you went around the globe, that's that's about where they're at. Is, mm. You know, depending on what part of Sweden. That would be kind of a, a tough thing to acclimate to. I yeah. would think. I think that's the hard, one of the hardest adjustments for my daughter is weather. Yeah. Okay. Other than they wanted to be like a Swede, and she's not. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long has she lived there? Six years. Okay. Yeah. Was was the adjustment difficult for her, or was it relatively easy? Because there are some things that are kind of similar to here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, she lived in, uh, uh, she went to three years of school in, in, in Spain, uh, third grade, seventh grade, and I think 10th or 11th grade. And two of those years, she lived with Spanish families. Okay. So I think her adjustment was probably easier because she had had a different experience before sure. she went over there. Um, I think the toughest adjustment is, is being adopted into a Swedish family. I think it's hard for any immigrant to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, they're just, their rules and, you know, it's one thing to travel to a country for a month or two and come back, but if you got to live there, it's different. Yeah. You know, uh, she's away from family. She's the only one of us over there. Uh, I think it's hard. Yeah. I, I think, and it's same, I'm sure it's hard, equally hard for the people to come over here. Yeah. You know, and I think the older you get, the harder it is to adjust. So I, I just think those those things are really difficult. To, yeah. You know. Well, it's got to be difficult for you and your wife it is, too. Absolutely. You know, having a daughter that yep. you know half a continent away or half a world away That's and right. half a globe away, and and um, you know we think it's tough when we have someone just living in a different time zone here right. in the states. Right. You know, yeah. and and here she is. How, how many hours difference is the time zone? Eight. Okay. Well, yeah. That's pretty substantial. Yeah, it is. You yeah. know, when you're trying to make phone calls and, yeah. it, you two, know. Two I, cents a minute is, I have a, sp a deal that, so it's called Penny Talk. Okay. That's really good. That really helps. We probably talk once or twice a week. But that's tough to it just is. find a time to talk because, you yeah. know, yeah. when yeah. it's two yeah. here, it's yeah. 10 o'clock yeah. there. They've got kids. They're probably sleeping, yeah. you know. We usually call it two in the afternoon, okay. which makes it about nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, we have email. I mean, we have computers. Yeah. But it's, still, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, different, it's a different world. What yeah. other things uh, can you share with us about uh, Sweden? Mm -hmm. You didn't bring any artifacts with no, you. No, I don't have any artifacts. Um, well, let's see. Uh, oh, I, I, one that's interesting, and it's probably different, is it's called the, uh, um, the right of common access. The Swedes are very proud of this. Uh, you can camp anywhere in open land in Sweden for one night for nothing. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're driving your car along a highway and you see a, you know, a pasture or a piece of land out there that's not fenced in, maybe even fenced in, the right of common access is you can pull your camper in there or take your tent out of your car and, and spend a night on that place and go somewhere else the next night, somewhere else the next night. And they're very proud of that. Even on someone's private land? Yeah, as long as you're not you got your tent up beside their house or something. Oh, right. Hmm. So what That's you see in the what you see in the summertime is all these they call them caravans. They're just cars with little trailers behind them. Mm -hmm. The Norwegians come, the Danes come, 
the Germans come, the Netherlands come, and they're all pulling these little trailers, and they're about every fourth car on, on their interstates. And I'm, I'm saying to Sebastian, what's going on? He said, well, they're all, it's free camping over here. They'll, they'll spend one night in one place, and one night in the next place, and one night in the next place, and one night in the next place. So the hotel motel industry is probably not real big there. Well, it probably cost you $150 yeah. a night for rooms, so, wow. uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be pulling my car You'd over be, on, yeah, yeah, <laughs> on someone's too. land, too, probably. But, you know, that, that's so interesting. I realize that they're not pulling right up to the door, yeah. and they're not expecting, you know, yeah. uh, a meal served to them right. in the morning. But for a people that, you know, don't really talk too freely yeah. to strangers. Yeah. They ignore them. You know, yeah. yeah. And and so here's this. They got uh, lots of land. I mean, difference. there's only 9 million people. I mean, so yeah. it's a lot of open space, yeah. a lot of woods. Mm -hmm. You know, 80% of, of Sweden is hmm. trees. All right. Very good. Um, <laughs> I had a note here. Sex and sin in Sweden. We hear about Swedish mm -hmm. movies and things mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Um, talk to me a little about that. There isn't any. So that's all just... Um, they, don't, they don't want to talk about it. Okay. Yeah. But they, they don't, they're, they're, their standard answer, there isn't any. Hmm. Okay. There is, but they don't. They yeah. Don't, they, don't, they, don't, they just, you know, kind of prudish. Hmm. I think, uh, in general, I think Norwegians and Swedes tend to be prudish. Okay. But they're very natural. For example, uh, nudity among young children, uh, both sexes, it's very common. Uh, picnics. Even the parks, you know, people don't care if, you know, six-year-old Johnny is running around the park with a six-year-old Joan and they both don't have any clothes on. But maybe that's why, in their mind, sex is not a big thing yeah, because yeah. it's it's um, it's downplayed. Yeah, it is. You it know, is it's downplayed. It's just like it, it, I mean, they don't make a big deal out yeah, of uh, yeah. the naked body. I mean, yeah. just like at nudist colonies here. Yeah, and there are a lot of nude beaches, although their summers can be pretty chilly. Mm -hmm. um, th this is not off the color, I don't think, but the two little boys are laying on the uh, living room floor watching TV, and they both don't have any clothes on. And so the youngest boy is like, a, you know, he's off of his diaper, and so he's sort of touching his lower parts. And so Oliver, who was five, turned to me and he said, Dan, you know what Jeremy's doing? I said, yeah. He said, he's playing with his penis. And I said, yes. He said, uh, Dan, do you play with your penis? <laughs> So I had to say something right away. So I said, <laughs> not as much as I used to, Oliver. And that, and that was the end of the discussion. But, you know, these little ones, that you've you got to be ready for them. Yeah. They come up with the craziest questions. Well, and when things are that open. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and unassuming. Yeah. You just, you know, you know don't, don't like, oh, well, I can't talk about that. Yeah. No, no. Real quickly, yep. um, Filofax, is that what this uh, is that you showed us before? The Filofax records? is, is it's unbelievable. In every house I'm there, they put down... <clears throat> A daily calendar of everything they do. That's the file of facts. Okay. It's just incredible. And what's the purpose of that? I don't know. Maybe they're going to forget. I don't know. <laughs> it, they're so organized. It just drives me nuts. Huh. I mean, my d Mecca has become an organizer. She was wow. never an organizer. And the Swedish men, oh, you'd love being married to one because they're such hygienic cleaners. Sebastian really? will spend all of a Saturday cleaning the house. He lets Mecca and the boys leave and he cleans it. Hey, now that's a nice concept. Yeah. That's a great concept. I mean, and he cleans it. It's unbelievable how clean it is. And you don't wear your shoes. You take off your shoes. And that's true in many countries. You never walk in the house with your shoes on. All right. <laughs> Dan, thank you. Oh, it's fun. always Thanks. a pleasure. Yeah. It's always, And you've always got good stories to tell. Good. Well, I, 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 I miss being here, and I'm glad I'm back tonight. We so. miss you as well. Yeah. And um, I will have you back um, I'll be, I'll around come back. election season. Sounds good. All right. Take care. If not before. Thanks. All right. And thanks to you, as always. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.